can I just testify for a second? I'm a blessed man. Not only am I a blessed man because I'm in my right mind and that I know my name, I'm a blessed man because I serve a blessed people. So I give God honor and I give God praise for one more opportunity. And some people may take it for, for granted that they can do some of the things, but I don't take it for granted. Because I remember when I couldn't do this. And I remember when I felt that was unworthy. But God, God looked beyond my faults and saw my very need. So I just want to be a living testimony to somebody. That God can take your little one. God can make it much. God can take your idea and turn it into a dream. God can take a situation and give you new meaning. So I don't know what you're dealing with. And I, I don't know what you're struggling with. But I came by to tell you. We serve a God that can do the impossible. We serve a God that can make a way out of no way at all. You ain't got to be special. You ain't got to be so intelligent. All you got to do is say, here I am. Use me. You ain't got to have it all together. You ain't got to have all the right answers. All you got to say is, God, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. I, I, I know it's Father's Day and that um, and that we need to move on. So quickly, hey, quickly turn with me to Genesis chapter 17. Listen, that this is the year. 
that some strongholds will be defeated. This is the year uh, that some chains will be loosed. This is the year uh, that some breakthroughs will occur and that God's will for our life will become reality. We have fasted. We've had revival. We, we've turned our hearts to God. We, we have worshipped and we have prayed for a resurrection of God's people in every aspect of their lives. But if some of us are honest this morning, six months and a couple of hours into this year, uh, we, instead of thinking that big things are happening, and some of us are like Bill Murray in the movie Groundhog Day, different day, but the same outcome. And that's why the Lord has sent me here on the fine assignment this morning to give you a message uh, that is gender neutral, but, but right on time. I believe for every man who's waiting for his breakthrough this Father's Day. And that's why I come to say to every Cliff Huxtable who's holding it down as a husband, as a father, and as a son, to every Fred Sanford who's the king of your own junkyard, to, to, every, to every James Evans who, who's making a way when you can, to, to every George Jefferson who's trying to just get up that hill, to, to every father who looks at his daughter and here's the words of Stevie Wonder in his ears. Oh, isn't she lovely? To every dad who looks at his son and pumps out his chest and brushes off his shoulders like Jay-Z and says he's just a chip off the old block. To every uncle and brother and friend that has served as a male influence in our lives and spoke words of power and inspiration into our spirit by just saying, you got this. And to every person, male or female, who has challenged us and covered us and cared for us and molded us and loved us and even sometimes beat us into the place that they wanted us to be. <laughs> the Lord sent me here to give you a word of encouragement. You are closer than you think. I, I, I know that some of us have had some setbacks. I know some of us have had some false starts. I, I know some of us have taken one, two steps forward in order to take one step back. I know some of us have had some disappointments and, and life just hasn't been easy. I, I know that maybe you're like me. Sometimes you just have to get into your own closet and just cry sometimes. But I came by to tell someone, don't get discouraged. You've invested too much into this situation. Don't, don't, don't give out. You, you've come too far. Don't, don't give up. Because even though you may not see your breakthrough coming, it's just around the corner. Because the good word that the Lord has given me to give to you is that you are closer than you think. Turn to three people and give them a high five and say, you're closer than you think. Come on, do it like you really believe it. You're closer. Someone needs a breakthrough. Open up your mouth and say, you're closer. You're closer than you think. That promotion, you're closer than you think. That breakthrough, you're closer than you think. That new job, you're closer than you think. That new house, you're closer than you think. That healing, you're closer than you think. Walking in God's vision for your life, you're closer than you think. That relationship you wanted, you're closer than you think. You're closer than you think. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, the word of God first came to Abraham in which he is told that he will be the ancestor of, and father of a great nation. In response to the word of God, Abraham packs up his wife Sarah and, and his nephew Lot and begins the search for his new destiny. But what's interesting to me about the story of Abraham is that the, that in the story begins in chapter 12, verse 3, and that Abraham is 75 years old, but, but when the promise comes to him, and chapter 17, here are the words of God. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. And in other words, beloved, 25 years has passed between chapter 17, between chapter 12 and chapter 17. And, and, and then when you look a little further, the confirmation comes in chapter 17, but, but it's not until chapter 21 that the fulfillment of the promise comes. 
I think I just lost someone. And in other words, you may be working and, and struggling and, and trying to make a way out of nowhere at all. And, and it may seem like that your life is just walking in quicksand. It, it may seem like you're doing everything that you want to do, but, but you can't make any progress. It, it may seem that everything you try to do, the devil is trying to block you. But I came by to tell someone, you may be just one year away. One decision away, one moment away for your breakthrough to occur. Right. Beloved, I, th I think the problem that many of us have is that many times we look for signs of God's wonder when God is just telling us to be patient. And sometimes God will reveal himself to us. And, and there are other times where God just moves on behalf of those who just have been faithful. That's why our job as a believer is not to try to figure out God's timing or to look for signs and, and look for signals of what God will do and how God will keep God's word. Our job as a believer is to be faithful to the assurance that if God promised it, that just settles it. And is there anyone who knows here that, that when God promises you something, that settles it? I, I know it might be counterintuitive, but, but being a believer is more than just knowing scripture. <laughs> you, you, you see, uh, just because you know scripture doesn't really mean that you know his voice. And the issue that I see with some of us is that, that we know a lot of words, but we don't hear God call. I, I don't know about you, but, but when I've been through the, the low points of life, when I've had some delays in my life, it's not that I made it over because I knew the scripture. I made it over because I knew God's voice. And is there anybody here who knows the difference between knowing words and knowing God's voice? Knowing God's voice is that when you feel all by yourself, something tells you to keep on moving. Knowing God's voice is that when the doctor gives you a bad report, you say, praise God anyhow. Because you know that just because God gave you that report, God can give you another. Knowing God's voice is that when you're all by yourself, you're never alone. Because the Bible says, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. But even when grandma and grandpapa couldn't read the Bible, they still knew that God loved them. How did they know? They knew it because they knew God's voice. Because in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit spoke into their spirit and said, even though they say you can, I say you can. And that's why I came by to tell someone, you need to not only know God's word, but you need to know God's voice. Knowing God's voice will allow you to live through the vicissitudes of life. Knowing God's voice will allow you to even move forward even when you have a delay. I came by to tell someone, hey, God will speak to you sometimes in a peculiar way. Hey, and the reason I've made it through life sometimes is because God spoke to me through my children. God spoke to me through the road signs. God, God spoke to me through people I didn't even know. That's why this Father's Day, I don't pray for stuff. I pray to just know God's voice. I pray, God, teach me. Teach me your voice. Teach me your voice before I quit too soon. Teach me your voice before I throw in the towel. Teach me your voice before I give in to my doubts and I give in to my fears. Teach me your voice before I set myself back 10 years when you're trying to move me forward in one year. Teach me your voice. Teach me how to wait on you. Teach me how to hold my peace. Teach me how to love you even when I don't know you. Teach me how to move forward when I can't see you. Teach me when you call me. Teach me to sit down. Teach me to stand up. Lord, teach me. Teach me your voice. Teach me what to cry about. Teach me what not to cry about. Teach me what to worry about. Teach me not what to worry about. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me your voice. Chapter 17, verse 15 says, God spoke to Abraham. As for Sarah, your wife, you should not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I, God says, will bless her. And moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. 
And my beloved, it's from this biblical record of Isaac's birth and that we learn several lessons about the promises of God that I want to quickly dial into your spirit and then get out of your way. <laughs> is that all right? And the first lesson is simply this. Never give up on God. Someone open up your mouth and say, Never give up on, never give up on God. Never say it one more time. Never give up. Never give up, never give up on God. Even if life goes, even if life gives you a thousand reasons to quit, you need to know that God will give you a thousand and one reasons to move forward. Let me back that up and say it again. Even if life gives you a thousand reasons to quit, God will give you a thousand and one reasons to move forward. Some of y'all know my story, but, but I'm going to tell it to you anyhow. When, um, when I first gave my life to Christ, I, I never knew God was going to call me to the ministry. But then 1994 came, and I decided that I was going to go to seminary. Normally, seminary takes three years. But after year three, I was still there. After year four, I was still there. After year five, I was still there. I wasn't there because I didn't have the intellectual capacity. I was there because I had family obligations that I had to meet. I have to admit, um, I wonder sometimes, and so I just give up on this dream. I saw people come in to school who were less talented than me, get promoted over me. I saw people that, that I didn't even know that I had to bow down and serve them. Many days I said, God, I, I, I can't do this. I'm ready to throw in the towel. But, but something in my spirit told me, keep on moving forward. And my, my point to you is that no matter how long it takes, never, ever give up on God. Even if you don't understand why things are happening the way they're happening, never give up on God. Even if it seems longer that you work, the harder things become. Never give up on God. Even if you begin to question like I did, God, why did you put me in this situation? Why are you promoting others and I'm still toiling year after year? I came by to tell someone on this Father's Day, never give up on God. There may be better people who are more qualified than you. There may be people who are more spiritual than you. There even, there may even be people more experienced and younger than you. But the good news of the gospel is, if you never give up on God, God will never give up on you. That's why despite what you're going through, never give on, up on God. Despite what other people are saying about you, never give up on God. Because just when you are about to give up, God is about ready to open up the windows of heaven. Just when you're about to ready to throw in the towel, God's getting ready to give you a breakthrough. Just when others say you can, God is about to say not only can you do it, but I'll walk with you. The first lesson we understand about the promises of God is to never give up on God. Because God called you for a reason. He, he could have called someone else. He knows their resume. He knows their qualifications. But God has called you. And because God has called you, you will never fail, nor will you fall by yourself. Because the Bible says, even though you may stumble, I will not let you fall. I don't know about you, but I believe in this in this world, there's a spirit that goes around saying, you ain't never going to do something. We see it in our families. You ain't never going to do something. When we see it on our jobs, we see it in our schools. And I have to say, we even see it in our church. Yeah. There are people who love to walk up to you when, when things are not going your way right. and tell you that you're never going to finish school. That you're never going to get that degree. That, that you're never going to be anything. That, that you're never going to be anything without me. That you're never going to find somebody as good as me. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. But, but I came by to tell someone that the devil is a liar. For greater is he than that is in you. 
that he and that is in the world. I came by to tell someone there's nothing that our God can't do. Say it with me. If God promised it, that settles it. Say it like you really believe it. If God promised it, that settles it. If God promised you a promotion, that settles it. If God promised you a new house, that settles it. If God promised you a new opportunity, that settles it. If God promised you healing, that settles it. If God promised you deliverance, that settles it. If God promised you covering, that settles it. If God promised you his favor, that settles it. If God promised you a blessing, that settles it. If God promised it, I came by to tell someone, that settles it. That settles it. That settles it. If God promised you something, that settles it. I'm looking at you right now. I don't think you really got it. Point to yourself and put your hand on yourself. And say, if God promised it, that settles it. Say it again. If God promised it, that settles it. Now say, if God promised me something, that settles it. Now get your hands together. Give God some praise. Listen to me, man. If God said it, not only did he say it, but he promised it, that settles it. You may not know when, and you may not know how. Hey! But that settles it. That settles it. Hey, if God promised it, that simply settles it. And the second lesson we learned from the birth of Isaac is that no matter what you're going through, Hear me when I say this. Keep the faith. For often the most amazing things in life happen at the moment you're about to give up hope. Hey! Often the most amazing things in life happen when you're about to give up hope. And when Jennifer and I, Lady J and I, had our first child, it was five years before we were able to have baby number two. So we, we, we thought there was something wrong with us. And we thought... It would never happen. But then, one day out of the blue, hey, God told her to go to the doctor. And not only did she go to the doctor, but the doctor cured her of the issue that was holding it up. And you see, she had a blockage in her stomach that prevented us from getting pregnant. And I believe that's what's going on in some of our lives. We got a blockage in our life. And we don't know anything about it. But I know the great physician. And if you come to the altar and say, God, I've got an issue. God, I've got a problem. I can't do it all by myself. God will not only kill you, God will relieve the blockage. Hey, hey, we at least expect it. God will remove that impediment. We at least expect it. God will open up the windows. We at least expect it. God will open up. God will open up the door. Hey, 24 years. 24 years had passed between God giving Abram the promise and God coming back to reconfirm it. Hey, some of us were given a promise not just last year, but five years, and maybe 10 years down the road. And we've been waiting patiently for God to make that promise come to fruition. And we've been saying, something big is happening, something big is happening, and nothing seems to be happening. But Sue, I came by to tell myself, even when I'm about to give up hope, God is about to do something new in my life. I may not know when, and I may not know how. But one thing I do know, that God can do it. For 24 years, for 24 years, Abram had to wait. Remember, but the thing you have to remember is that we know how the story ends. Abram and Sarah had, had no idea that when God appeared to them in chapter 17, that they were one year away from their breakthrough. And let me just look in someone's eyes right now. And you may be waiting for your breakthrough. And you're about to give up 
and throwing the towel. You, you about to do something that your spirit is telling you not to do. But I came by to tell you, you never know. You may be one moment away, one second away, one opportunity away, one year away from the vision that God has for your life. I know that some of us are worn out. I know some of us are worn out. I know some of us are just beat down. I know that the negative talking and negative people have almost made us want to throw in the towel. I know, because I've lived in myself, the, the false stories and, and how the failures can, can wear on you. But I came by to say, maybe God's plan for your life is a, a five-year program and you're on year four. <laughs> maybe God's plan for your life is a 10-year is a program and you're on year 10. Maybe God's plan for your life is a 365-day program and you're on day 360. And maybe your God's plan for your life is only a seven-day program and you're you on year six. My, my point is, regardless of the time, what happens if you give up too soon? What happens right before the breakthrough? You throw in the towel. Let me encourage you. You waited this long? What's one more day? You waited this long? What's one more month? You waited this long? What's one more year to walk in the vision that God has for your life? Beloved, you don't know how close you are to the thing that God has for you. You don't know how close you are to that breakthrough or that success or that triumph that God has for your life. Only God knows. That's why I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say it again. Don't get discouraged. Don't quit. Hold on. You might be closer than you really know. But, but let, me, let me give a warning here. Don't just hold on to stuff that's holding you back. Don't just keep holding on to things that keep you running on the wheel. Don't just keep holding on to the same thing that's had you bound and discouraged and complaining and worried all your life. Holding on means holding on to the promises of God, not the wishes of people. Holding on means holding on to the promises of God, not people who are trying to keep you in the box. Holding on means holding on to the promises of God, not this image of what you think your life should be. Holding on means holding on to the promises of God and walking in the vision that not us and not other people, but God has for your life. Don't give up on God. It may be right where your miracle comes. And here's the third, and I hear my music playing, so it's like the Emmys, I'm about to get, my time is up. <laughs> We learned from the birth of Isaac. <laughs> Even though I'm in the spirit, I can still be funny. <laughs> what we learned from Isaac is we learned to never give up on God. We learned that we might be closer than we think. And finally, we learned that no matter how long it takes, your Isaac is worth the wait. After Isaac's birth, neither Abraham nor Sarah complained about how long it took of what they had to go through. All they knew was that they had a little baby boy. I, I said before, it took me six years to complete seminary. But the part I left out is that it took me 14 years to get ordained. 14 years. Beloved, that's a long time. 1996 to 2010, it took me to get ordained. Year 
at the year, I toiled and studied. Year after year, when others had moved on, I, I, I just kept telling myself, I, I'm one step closer. Year after year, when friends of mine got ordained and got churches, I, I just kept telling myself, my day will one day come. Year after year, when, when other people were, were being promoted and being elevated, and I was still being a minister on hold on someone else's staff. Year after year, when I wasn't getting them, I wasn't getting the encouragement or the, or the, uh, or the opportunities to, to exercise my gift, I kept telling myself, I'm just one year closer to my dreams. But can I share something with you? I have my degree. But can, can I share something with you? I have my ordination. But, but this is the part I want you to understand. No one has ever asked me how long it took. All they know is that I've got it. And, and that's my point to someone here today. No matter how long it takes, no one's going to care how long it took you. All they need to know is that you got your Isaac. I don't know what your Isaac is, but if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand, if you just keep moving in God's vision for your life, God will not only give you an Isaac, God will give you one, two, three times a lady. Is there anybody here who knows this one the way? Is there anybody here who knows that you stand on God's word? God will bless you anyhow. Is there anybody here who knows this when the darkness comes? That's when the light shines. Is there anybody here who knows that when someone closes one door, God will open up another door? Is there anybody here who knows that it's worth the wait? Because when I read the Bible, the devil said, I got you on Friday. But they waited not one day, not two days, but they waited three days. And when they waited, Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Jesus said, you thought you defeated me on Friday, but I'm coming to see you on Sunday. My point to you is this, you may be closer than you think. Your miracle may be right around the corner. Your opportunity may be one day away. Your vision for your life is just one step in God's plan. Is there anybody here who's ready to wait on God? Is there anybody here who's ready to wait on their breakthrough? I don't know about you, but I'm one step closer to my destiny. I'm one step closer to God's vision for my life. And no matter how long it takes, no matter how long it takes, no matter how long it takes, I'm going to wait on it. I'm going to wait on it. Because he'll bless me. He'll cover me. He'll love me. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he do it? Hey, won't he do it? Hey, won't he do it? Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it?